Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how we can manipulate the time of samples in different ways to fit with our project and our idea. It's often that we sample something and it'll be in a different tempo or BPM to what we were trying to create. The example here is in 172, which works really great if we go back to 86. Here, I've set the project to 92, knowing that that's gonna be six dB different to the half time. So we're gonna to need to play around with it a little bit and get it to fit in with what we're looking to do. For context, I've just put a drum break in the track as well, so we can really hear and feel what's going on. So this time, let's use the 174 BPM Stack Cellos 2. I think they'll fit nicely with the drums we've got. So this time we could just bring them straight into the playlist instead of using the time stretch in Edison. We're not even going to need it. So it doesn't take much to see that these are pretty out of time to what we're after. They definitely don't fit at all. So let's extend our drum loop to cover what we're looking to do here. Now there's a couple of ways that we can approach this. We happen to know that this sample here is 174 BPM. And we can adjust that by right clicking here. We can go fit to tempo. We can type in BPM as 174. And it's going to adjust for us so it fits correctly but it slowed it down so much that it doesn't sound correct anymore. What we need to do here is have stretch enabled and we're gonna dial it back so that it does fit correctly. Now at the moment it's stretched so badly it's potentially double the time. So let's halve the time. and We can do that by looking at where the sample ends and where we would like it to end. It's currently ending here on the start of bar nine. We'd want it to actually end right here. So we can drag it back like this. And we want to make sure that everything else stays roughly on beat. It might be the case that it's come back too far as it starts to drift off here. So we could bring it forward like this. That looks much better. Let's see how that now sounds. That is pretty much what we're after. Now, that all came into the assumption that we knew the BPM of this and that we were able to halve it. Let's bring in another sound. Um, I think we'll do the cellos one instead. As we can see, it's out of time again. Now, let's pretend this time we don't know this is in 174 BPM. We need to figure that out. So if we right click up here again, we can use detect tempo. Now it's given an estimated of 90.4, which is not hugely far off. It would be 87, but it's taking into account our BPM and the fact that there's a tail at the end that puts it a little bit out. Let's use the estimated though. Now this is asking us if we would like to set our project tempo to the same as the sample. In this case, no. We want the sample to adhere to us. So notice here that the sample hasn't actually changed from what it initially was. It's still gonna be out of time for us. And a lot of the time you'll have that kind of thing happen when you're using the estimated and the auto detect. So here's how I prefer to do this. Um, let's just have a stretch on. We'll generally start the sample right towards the start here. And I'm gonna use these transients to give myself a rough guide as to where I think this should go. And I think we'd probably go for something like that. What 
I'll then do, once I've got a rough idea, and that's a bit slow, I think I'll double time that, is I'll hit C to get the slice tool, slice, slice the end off straight like this, press P to get the paint tool back. Now this is going to be exactly on here, uh, it's going to snap to the grid, so I can really easily double time it. Oh, I can even go one third there. One last thing to look at is the algorithm being used. If we double click, um, there's a few different variations. We've got mode up here, and it's on resample at the minute. You'll quite often find that E3 is gonna be your best option. Hear how that sounds much better. Let's bring the cellos in. And that is just a few ways that we can manipulate the time of our samples to get them to fit in place. Making use of that and the ability to find the key in Edison can be two very useful tools to get you started when working with your samples. In the next section, we're going to have a look at more ways we can manipulate the samples on the playlist like we just have with the tempo here.